Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're diving deep into the incredible story of one of the most ambitious American fighter jet projects that never made it to the skies, the Republic XF-103 Thunder Warrior. This aircraft, born in the fiery crucible of Cold War tensions, was designed to be a high-speed, high-altitude interceptor capable of reaching Mach 3. Built by Republic Aviation for the United States Air Force, the XF-103 was a machine that pushed the boundaries of technology, engineering, and imagination. Let's start with the background. The XF-103 program originated during the early 1950s when the U.S. was facing the growing threat of long-range Soviet bombers. The U.S. military needed a powerful interceptor that could climb rapidly, reach very high altitudes, and intercept enemy bombers before they could strike. In response, the U.S. Air Force issued a requirement for a 1954 interceptor, a fast, armed aircraft with advanced radar, missiles, and the ability to function in all weather conditions. Republic Aviation responded with an incredibly futuristic design, the XF-103. The XF-103 was not your ordinary jet. It was a titanium-made beast with a sharp, needle-like nose, small wings, and a long fuselage built for speed and efficiency. The use of titanium was revolutionary at the time, chosen for its strength and heat resistance, it allowed the aircraft to withstand the intense temperatures generated by flying at Mach 3. However, titanium was also very difficult to work with using 1950s manufacturing technology, which would later contribute to the project's delays and complications. One of the most unique aspects of the XF-103 was its propulsion system. The aircraft was to be powered by a hybrid propulsion concept, combining a Wright J67 turbojet engine, a licensed version of the British Bristol Olympus with an RJ55W1 ramjet engine. At low speeds, the turbojet would provide the necessary thrust. Once the XF-103 reached high supersonic speeds, the ramjet would take over, allowing the aircraft to cruise at Mach 3 and beyond. This dual-mode engine concept was incredibly advanced for its time but also extremely complex to design, integrate, and test. In terms of avionics and radar, the XF-103 was to be equipped with a powerful radar system, capable of detecting enemy aircraft from long distances, even in poor visibility. The aircraft would carry GAR-1 Falcon Air to air missiles internally in a weapons bay to reduce drag. It had no guns, it was designed purely as a missile-armed interceptor, reflecting the growing reliance on guided weapons during that era. Now let's talk about the cockpit, and this is where things get even more fascinating. The XF-103 was designed to have no traditional canopy. That's right, instead of a glass cockpit, the pilot would sit fully enclosed inside the fuselage, viewing the outside world via a periscope system. The idea was to reduce drag and increase survivability at extreme speeds. While this approach was cutting edge, it also introduced serious visibility and situational awareness concerns that were never fully resolved. Let's pause and talk about the cost of such an ambitious aircraft. At the time, the projected cost per aircraft was estimated to be over $4 million USD in 1950s dollars, that's the equivalent of more than $45 million in today's money when adjusted for inflation. Keep in mind, this price was just an estimate, since the XF-103 never entered mass production, we never saw the real unit cost. The U.S. Air Force originally planned to build at least 10 prototypes, with hundreds of operational jets expected to follow. So what happened? Why did such a futuristic and powerful aircraft never fly? The answer lies in a combination of technical problems, shifting, military priorities, and the rapid pace of jet development in the 1950s. First, the dual-mode engine system proved to be extremely complicated to develop. The J-67 engine itself faced delays, and the ramjet technology was still unproven at that time. The aircraft's titanium construction added further delays and cost overruns. Meanwhile, newer and more practical aircraft like the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger and later the F-106 Delta Dart were moving ahead more quickly and offered effective high-speed interception capabilities. By 1957, after millions of dollars had been spent and years of research conducted, the XF-103 program was officially cancelled. No prototype was ever fully completed, and not a single XF-103 took flight. Only mock-ups and partial test models were constructed. Despite its cancellation, the XF-103 left behind a legacy of bold innovation. 
Many of its ideas, such as titanium construction, internal weapons bays, and ramjet propulsion, were decades ahead of their time. Even though it never flew, the XF-103 served as a valuable experimental platform that influenced future aerospace designs. You can think of it as one of the many stepping stones that eventually led to modern stealth aircraft and high-speed interceptors like the State Route 71 Blackbird. The XF-103 also tells us something very important about military technology. Not all ideas work out, but every bold attempt teaches us something new. In the high-stakes world of Cold War aviation, experimentation was the key to maintaining technological superiority. While the XF-103 wasn't a success in the conventional sense, it represents the bold vision and daring engineering of a time when the sky was the limit, literally. Let's also appreciate the fact that the XF-103 was not built by just any company. It was designed by Republic Aviation, the same company that gave us legendary aircraft like the P-47 Thunderbolt and the F-105 Thunderchief. These were proven warplanes that served in World War II and the Vietnam War, respectively. Republic had a reputation for building rugged, powerful aircraft, and the XF-103 was meant to continue that legacy into the supersonic age. So if you're wondering whether this aircraft was ahead of its time, the answer is a resounding yes. With Mach 3 performance, radar-guided missiles, a periscope cockpit, and a ramjet-turbojet combo, the XF-103 Thunder Warrior was one of the most advanced interceptor concepts of its era. If it had worked, it might have changed the course of jet fighter design, but fate had other plans. To this day, the XF-103 remains a symbol of ambition and imagination in military aviation history. It's a reminder of how far engineers were willing to push the boundaries in the race for air superiority. While it never made it off the ground, the story of the XF-103 lives on in museums, technical blueprints, and the hearts of aviation enthusiasts everywhere. Thank you for watching and learning about this incredible aircraft with me. If you love stories like this, about forgotten jets, secret projects, and military technology from the Cold War era, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow aviation lovers. This was the story of the XF-103 Thunder Warrior, the titanium interceptor that was just too advanced for its time.